So influencers, I don't have the exact approach you can use here, but I can guarantee you, and you're doing this already with your podcast. So you're doing a great job already, but like, how can you get the influencers, anybody who's talked about podcast software to like fall in love with your brand to like be your best friend. Hello and welcome to another very special episode the confessions of a b2b marketer podcast and today is quite an interesting one i'm not sure if you heard the previous episode but we had sushan patel who is like a SaaS growth god basically come on the show we learned about his journey specifically with a SaaS product called mailshake i just had to get sujan back on because after that discussion he mentioned that he would be happy to provide growth insights for bcast our SaaS product so we jumped on another call and sujan basically just with very little knowledge or research, just uh, broke down four specific strategies that we should focus on. And so that's what this whole episode is going to cover. But before that, we have some special announcements. Ahrefs. Now, I, being in online marketing for like six years, was aware of Ahrefs. I never really jumped into and discovered the product, though, until approximately a year ago. Now it is probably my fourth visited website on the internet. I check it most days because I just love seeing the growth of our brands. It really is like x-ray vision for the internet. And the reason why we're talking about Ahrefs now is because they have released the Ahrefs Webmaster Tools for free. So it is completely free. You can go, go to ahrefs.com forward slash webmaster tools. You can monitor your SEO health. There's a hundred different issues you can cover. You can know exactly when you get new backlinks, and you can see the keywords that are bringing you traffic. So you can basically get the, the chunks of their product, which are really valuable. Uh, it, it normally costs, we pay about £100 a month for this, but you can get that for free. ahrefs.com forward slash webmaster tool. Thank you for Ahrefs for sponsoring this podcast. We'll be talking a little bit more about them in the coming episodes. Of course, before we jump into the content, if you can give us a review, a completely honest review on Apple, Please go and do that. I'll get you a shout out on the show if you do. I have one to read out here. So this is from Maximilian Defoe. Thank you so much. This is the longest and most detailed review we have ever had. It starts with confessions of a B2B marketer. It's my favorite place to gather marketing inspiration. Thank you so much, Maximilian. If you want to learn about Maximilian, you can go to motherload.studio. Maximilian does a few different things, artistic things. I wish I was more artistic like Maximilian. Anyway, let's jump into the discussion. I'll summarize the four strategies Sujan shared with us before we jump in, just in case you don't have time to listen to the full episode. But he basically said, first of all, focus on the features that help existing customers grow. Now we have about 1,200, 1,300 customers. If we can get them to grow, they're going to love us. They're going to refer their friends. So that was the first thing. Next was to 10x the kind of article creation or SEO volume that we were planning. After that, it's just pure hustle to get the backlinks to help them rank. And then his final piece of advice was to go and get to know all the influencers in the space. So I have essentially implemented much, like a number of different things over the past week since we had this chat to get these things rolling. I'm going to update you on this podcast. Of course, we'll also get Sujan back on at some point in the future so we can kind of review where we are, maybe in six months. And I can feedback exactly what's happened with those strategies, what the numbers are, and how Bcast is growing. But with that, we're going to jump right into the chat with Sujan now, where he starts kind of feeding back on what he thinks we can do to grow Bcast. Give me a rundown of that's what I was going to ask you. Is like I need to get kind of a, the high level overview of what uh, what's happening. Exactly. Okay. So it started just over a year ago. I met this guy called Neil from the SaaS marketer audience, and we the thesis was we were running a podcast for clients. We were paying for other hosts. We wanted to build one that's more suited to this B2B, the market is doing the podcast and wants to get an ROI. So we started building approximately a year ago. We found some early customers just through my network, priced pretty low, 15, even $10 a month for the first customers. Then we, so we just started building the first customers probably in April. Then we did AppSumo in July. And so we pulled about 75,000 pounds from that for us about 1,200 customers on the lifetime. And so right now we have between like just about $300 MRR and subscription customers. 
So that's like the original ones. And then we started to pick up a few since AppSumo closed, which was in October. We have about 60 grand in the bank. There's myself and Neil. And we now have a full-time developer who started this month. So that's like the business side of things. In terms of marketing, obviously there's like the AppSumo deal. We have started to pump out some content, but I haven't really started to rank yet. That's my job. We have, obviously because each user gets a podcast website, we are like we do have significant FA traffic from that. We're also getting a lot of backlinks from that as well. We also have the embedded player, which gets us some brand exposure. There's some virality there, which is the big reason for doing AppSumo. Other stuff on marketing, we have about 250 affiliates from AppSumo, but nothing's really started to come through that channel. So in, in summary... 250 affiliates, okay. Yeah, so basically we started with SEO and content, but that's going to take time. We have this virality through the product. We do have some affiliates, but not really much is going on there. And so the backdrop really is, we have this lump of cash. We may be doing some other promotions to get other lumps of cash in over the next six to nine months. We need to build subscription revenue up to cover the burn rate, let's say it's about $6,000 like minimum before the cash runs out. And the goal is to not raise money. Where are you at? Can you share MRR? Yeah, yeah. So as I said, it's around $300 per month MRR. Oh, $300. So it's like, okay. It's like 15 to 20 customers and the pricing is between 15 and $75 per month, but no one's on that higher plan. And okay, you probably said this already, but you gave a lot of information. Burn mm. timeline, like so, based on your current burn rate, how much is that money? How far is that money going to take you? Like six months? months? Yeah, yeah. It's the problem is like it'll take us to midway through twenty twenty one. We may be doing another two promotions, which will probably be a similar amount of cash. So, but again, lifetime deals, and so we do have the, obviously the, the AWS bill increasing with all, all these lifetime deals as well. So that we have to consider that. But current burn rate is like mid. We run out of money mid-2021, but we could extend that probably to the end of 2021 with other promotions. Okay. So, all right. Thank you for that detail. I've been looking you guys up a little bit while you're talking. Who are your biggest competitors? I would say Transistor.fm. I would say okay. Castos.com. Those would be the two ones. There's a few like Buzzsprout this and, and Libsyn are like the older ones. I know a bit about the strategy of the other two, if you want me to share. Not really just yet, but what about okay. like Pat Flynn's like smart player? Is that a, that's more of an embeddable yeah, so, so, direct competitor, right? Yeah, not a direct competitor. Someone could, someone would have a podcast host and they would potentially buy that as well separately. It's called Fusebox now. I think they've renamed it. But yeah, like all of the other, all of the podcast hosts were are kind of building stuff from that into their players. Yeah. Yeah. So meaning like you could build that feature and really just. You also serve that audience is essentially what I'm saying. Yeah. So the core feature they had on their player was like an email opt-in form on the player, which we've just built ourselves for our player. Got it. Okay. And then I guess, what are you doing right now for marketing purposes? Yeah. So it was on hold doing that Thuma deal, because obviously if you have a lifetime deal, it's going to be hard to get subscription customers. That's now closed. I have kicked off like the SEO and content strategy. The, the content isn't yet live, really. It should be going live in the next couple of weeks. But I'm just, I have like bottom of the funnel, middle of the funnel, and top of the funnel keywords, and then different content to match those keywords, either landing pages or blog posts. The big one that I'm going to hit is how to start a podcast. That's like the big keyword that I know a lot of our competitors are ranking for. I think I can create something a little bit better than that. So that's happening. We're also doing something called Beecaster of the Week, where we interview one of our customers, and it's like a weekly written interview that we share on social to get them to share, et cetera. So that's just like, a bit of social proof, the stuff we can send. So they send a weekly email to all the customers with product updates and the Bcast of the week and any new content. So that's what I've started to do on SEO content and social. Okay, cool. All right, so let me give you some now unsolicited, I guess a solicited yeah. advice because we're, we're doing this podcast. Yeah. So I think that feedback's all helpful. I'm going to like, I don't know if you have a goal specifically, but I'm going to set one for you and then we're going to work backwards from that goal, right? Yeah. So I think, I think really given all the information you said, I think getting to 10K MRR as fast as possible would be a good like step one to like, in my mind, again, if I were doing this, like, should I keep doing this? Is there traction here, right? The good thing is you've got a lot of users. What's the number of customers? Like users or customers that you have now, including all the lifetime deals? 1,300. There's 870 okay. podcasts live. Okay. 
So that's a great opportunity, right? So let's say 5% of them bring in new users and you got a free trial. Looks like the 14 day free trial. How long is a free trial? Yeah, 14 day. Okay. So let's assume your funnel is good and you know probably can improve that. But like you really need to get to, let's say, to get to 10,000 MR, 500 customers. I'm actually going to say you actually need to increase your pricing. Mm. And let's say you want to get to around 30, 300 customers with an average. So if you increase your pricing to $29 a month, because the hard part about starting a podcast is not $15 a month. It's not the price that gets me there. I got to do work. I spend five minutes on it. It's more than $15 a month of time, right? So my thesis in this is that like, yeah, and I don't actually even care about your competitor's pricing. Pricing, I don't think, in my opinion, and no offense to Transistor FM or Castos, I don't think any of those guys have it figured out. I don't think anybody knows what they're doing. They're, everyone's, you know, like, I'm a founder. You could say I don't know what I'm doing as well. But like, I think the industry is like, everyone's too new to say like, this is the right way to go. So I'm going to assume no one knows what they're doing. Everyone's bootstrapped. There's no outside pressure. I think Castos has tiny yeah, that's it. capital yeah, that's funding. They're, they're like pretty low key. They're, they're also bootstrapped. Like everyone's kind of like the blind leading the blind in the <laughs> sense that like everyone's this bootstrap mentality. And I just like, my point with that is nobody actually has figured it out. There's no market leader to say, Ah, that's a successful way to do this. And so that being said, you could do whatever the hell you want and still make it work is my point. No one said like, this is the right path to go, right? Where if there was, it's like, okay, look, there's a price anchor and you can't really mess with that. Anything above that, people just don't want to do it. There's a hurdle, blah, blah, blah. I think it's a lot of greenfield opportunity. And so charge whatever the hell you want to charge and keep increasing pricing. So like approach number one is, as you keep getting more customers, increase pricing mm -hmm. because I can tell you pricing is not the problem. And then, so that, that's number one. Mm -hmm. So that you go from like getting, having to get 500 customers to only needing 300 customers. Right? So you only need another 270 or something customers. Or let's just say you need, a three, you need 300 new ones. I think the lot, like you start, you're going to start getting some virality and, and some word of mouth from all the users you've got now of the people who actually use the podcast. So try to stay top of mind. I think anything you can do to launch a new feature, a new functionality that can help, in my opinion, the death spiral of a podcast is you just don't get enough downloads. You don't get enough installs. You don't do as many. You may not do the right amount of uh, podcasts or your topics are bad. Anything you can do to get those 800 podcast hosts more traffic, more downloads, mm. more awareness is going to be good. So think about like you've got 12 months to try to do something to make it work. What are 12 like small features you can launch? One a month, right? And that why I say that is one, you're now helping your customers grow their podcasts. And so, yeah, your podcast, your, your value prop is you're a host. You know, you provide value, you have a player, which is awesome. And there's metrics and stuff like that, which is great. But you're now helping them with the biggest problem with podcasters, which is traffic and installs and not installs, downloads, mm. right? And so whatever you can do, I don't have those ideas, but I'm sure you got, you and your co-founder can... Yeah we, yeah, we have a big list. And so the thesis there is the more successful we can make these 800, the more word of mouth we're going to get. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And I wouldn't even say it's a thesis. It's a fact, mm. right? You make your eight and you stay top of mind too, right? I think the bigger thing is top of mind using features that can help your customers get better results, right? And so you're a podcast software, but the failure point of podcasts is not the software. It's the lack of traction. I had a podcast for like a year and a half and I just was like, it's peanuts to what my content gets. So why do I care, right? I can't figure out a distribution channel to make this work. And so it was more of like the marketing and the growth of the podcast and less of like, and then the time it took to make the podcast, right? So another thing you could do, another ways to do this is like, oh, hey, take a podcast. Can you, random feature idea. Okay, here, we're going to transcribe it for you using Rev or whatever, or you can manually lose money on this and say, oh, I'm going to take five beta, like, customers, take the five customers you have that are the best podcasts and say, 
my, I'm going to manually do this for people. I'm going to pretend like it's automated and say, here's the key takeaways. Here's, here's how to turn your blog podcast into blog post. And then here we're going to integrate with like, here's an email. You can just hit go with your, like it automatically sends an email to your email mm. list. These are like random automation ideas, but like you could fake it until it's, it's actually working. Yeah. Yeah. Right. With five people and just say, Hey, this is powered by Bcast. And you don't even need the Bcast. What you really need is there are five customers to love you. Right. And again, a good idea to take your podcast, which is a mobile, really mobile experience for the most part to a web experience desktop, meaning written content, search, what have you, uh, SEO traffic is you just transcribe it and turn it into a blog post. Now transcriptions suck, right? Like no one wants to read the whole interview. What they want is the 10 takeaways or like the description of it to make it a little bit more sexier, right? To make it look like when someone's searching for something, a written content. So again, like these are random ideas to make your customers more successful. But I think there's a lot to that because if you get known, I don't know, again, what Transistor FM and Cast does. I'm just going to assume they're not doing this. But if you get known as a company that's like, fuck, I'm not just going to buy this software. I'm going to get value. It's going to solve my problem. They're going to help me get better. It's going to solve my like, podcasting value problem, right? Or why problem podcasting. So that's like the thesis around whatever features you build, build around growth for your customers. So moving on. I think there's a lot of SEO value and this is kind of a slow play and it sucks to do a slow play for an early stage startup, get mm. traction. But I think there's a lot of opportunity in creating a like not great content, okay content around a whole lot of podcasting keywords. So like I'd go on Ahrefs, I'd go and talk, you know, I'd go find out what are like every single keyword related to podcasts out there, right? I don't even know. I'm going to actually, I'm going to do this while we talk. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, just like straight up podcast. So like, I have like, and I know this cause I've got a, um, I've got a podcast. I mean, I've, I've done the podcast. I've got a couple card articles on podcasts. So like, okay, what is a podcast? How to make a podcast, how to create a podcast, how to start a podcast. Those are the obvious ones. Okay. But like, here's a non-obvious one. Your guide to podcast advertising. So your customers are podcasters, right? Or people who consume or maybe marketers or, you know, what have you. And so it's like, think about like what they would want to read. Like you can even write basic stuff like how to use, how to upload a podcast to Spotify, right? How to start a podcast for free, how to upload a podcast to iTunes. Here's some hacks on how to get stats from iTunes. Like forget like, these are not, maybe people are like, they're not in the buying stage. But you're just like literally, you're literally creating these like kind of like long tail keywords and random things that people will look for. There's a, I don't know, there's a keyword podcast directory. I think it gets a few thousand searches or something of that nature. I don't know, create something like that. Like basic stuff on like, here's a random long tail. How much does Joe Rogan make on a, per podcast episode? It's just like super short. And I'm telling you to start creating some C minus content, thousand words with max, right? Like <laughs> don't get the best stuff out there. Just something mm. to get the groundwork and then build on top of that. Got it. And so you say less quality because there's more opportunity in doing more quantity. Well, I say less quality to reduce your cost, to increase your throughput, to increase the quantity you can produce. So in a perfect world, I'd say spend the money if you've got it. And if you oh, so you got it, if you want to, and get great content, I think the like I think the big thing here is even if you have the best content in the world, it's not like anyone's going to read it. You don't have a you don't have a blog that gets millions of visitors or tens of thousands of visitors. You're starting from scratch, right? So I think get the quality content out there at a cadence like let's say once a week or twice a month, right? Then get the quantity content that gets you the SEO value and just get it. And get like 50, 60, 100 articles on your site as mm. fast as humanly possible to get really? SEO so value. In like six months? No, less. Like how do you create like 50 to 100 articles on everything related to the word podcast and out there? In right? like two months. I need to hire yeah, a writer. Like team 60, of writers. 60 or 90 days. Yeah, it's, yeah you, first of all, you shouldn't be doing this. You should be hiring a writer to do this. Mm. I do have one writer, so. Good. And you can hire more, right? Mm -hmm. 
So again, like the quantity and SEO play of podcast related long tail keyword, long to mid tail keywords. And I'm just, I'm on Ahrefs. I use that usually for keyword research and whatnot. There's not a lot of competition. The, the keyword difficulty on some of these things are pretty cool. I mean, sorry, pretty low. And I think you can even do like the best podcast from top podcasts, like everything. Just again, the goal is to get get traffic. And I, I know I'm, what I'm telling you is probably not going to get you the right customer. They're not even going to buy. But what it's going to get you to get is people referencing you, getting out there, right? Getting a blog, getting more associated with podcasts so that whatever you do, you can get the HubSpot advantage. HubSpot can write an mm-hmm. article on freaking how to create a flower garden and they will rank because they've got so much authority on every single topic under the, world, under the sun, right? That like they could write an article on Flower Garden that they could rank page two within like 60 days. And Jeff, the reason why I think this could work quite well is here is our AHRS. I'm just sharing the screen for anybody listening. You can see that because of the podcast website, et cetera, the maze is going through the roof. And uh, we've gone from basically no authority to 40 domain ranking since February, right? In like six months. So I think, yeah, like domain is getting authority. We just don't have any content related to podcasting yet, really. I, um, my strategy there was probably to not release 50 to 100 in two months. It would probably have been to release like five in two months, but I'm just going to pump it up now. Yeah, absolutely. And then the other part of this is how much software there is there? And this is another angle. Again, like I'd say if you're going to go create 50 articles, maybe it's like 10 of each different category of ideas. So like best podcast, like, Okay, you know Joe Rogan's podcast is huge. Like, is there any keywords, best episodes? Is there is someone searching for that? Can you create something like here's the 10 best episodes? Key takeaway, like, gotta check out second 15, like second, I gotta check out 15 minutes and 10 seconds into it. Whatever, right? Something that makes you a little different, right? It doesn't have to be that much work or that different. And then there's what are the podcast software out there now? Lipson. I don't know. What mics do you need? Like, can you do reviews on all the software out there, all the hardware out there on like that podcasters need, right? Like, I don't know, Blue Ant. I used to do a podcast, Blue Ant. I have a mic here. I think it's Blue Ant. I don't know. Blue, Blue you Yeti. Need like a, or Blue Yeti. There you go. Blue Ant is a Bluetooth receiver, I guess, I think. But uh, yeah, anyways, like just go make a list of all the software and look at, how much search they have or how many users they show on their website and go top to bottom reviews on like in-depth reviews, right? Maybe it's a video review that you do. So like that's something you and your founder, your co-founder can do because you guys know the space really well and you could probably spit out a good review in like 30 minutes or an hour on a video and you embed that video, take screencasts and put images from that video and you have someone write up an article from it, right? So this leverages your time a lot better. Yeah. And just like literally create a, you now have 10 or 15 articles there. And again, long-term go rank, right? And, and then mm-hmm. also this is something you can say is like, hey, customers, you know, use your customers as a megaphone. Hey, like here's all the software, here's all the reviews you've done. What, like, what tools are you using? Or like, here's what you should be thinking about, right? So that, that's the content play, I think long-term SEO value and then like high quality content. Let's just say one a month. Since you're going to be busy with all those 50 articles, just create one really good article a month. And it might be like interviewing influencers and talking about how they grew their podcast. Go interview all the successful podcasters and ask them like what they're doing to grow their business. I mean, uh, their podcast, what they did. And reality is, let's be real. There's like six or seven ways to grow a podcast. It's not like <laughs> an infinite amount of ways to do it. But if you're... Cust- and you got to also match this with like who is your customer and what is the buying cycle? My opinion is your customers are new podcasters, not unlikely switching. Maybe they are, don't know. So like now you know, it's like, how do you get your podcast off the ground? How do you get your first hundred installs? How do you get your first thousand? How do you get like from blah to blah to blah to blah? You know, like it's not so much like how do you get your first million? Because probably your customers don't have anywhere near that potential yet. So it's like matching the content to the customer's problem. All right, so that's the content. I want to switch gears to link building and uh, like offsite SEO stuff. And this is, I think, where you're going to get like thousand times the value of 
on-site stuff, but you can't get, you can't just do one. It's, you know, you have to do everything, especially for a new business, new site. So I think link building outreach guest posts will be good. Right. So like how many sites have articles on anything podcast, right? So Pat Flynn site, I don't know, like there's so many podcast software out there. There's so many articles on podcasts. I would go look for any site that has any remote query for some podcast software, right? Or podcast player or competitor name and not competitor like Castos and the Transistor FM. They don't have enough customers to matter. I'm talking about like real big software companies or like a pod, what's that? There's a podcast advertising company called come back to me in a second. But yeah, like all the podcast companies, right? Midroll mm-hmm. is the one I was thinking about. But like, like look, there's an article. I just Googled midroll. There's an article from Single Grain on like podcast advertising and what you need to know. Like just go look for everything podcast related and like just see if that you can get a link on their site. Right. So what approaches do you do to get a link? That part you have to kind of test out. My guess is you will have a pretty good success rate if you just ping them. Say, I love your blog. I you this mm. inspired me to start my company. <laughs> it doesn't have to be true. It sounds true. Mm. And probably somewhat can be true. Or I love your blog post. Reference something specific about the blog post. I love the fact that you have in section three, you talk about blah, blah, blah. I don't know, whatever, right? Something make make sure you're sincere and just say, hey, would you like, would you be up for linking? Well, like I just shared it and we're gonna share. Can I share this with my email list? Right. And then like, Hey, can I get a blog post? So again, I mean, can I get a link? Right. And I think there are my, I'm going to throw a guess out here just to guess based off the work, like 20 minutes of research I've done on Ahrefs before coming into this call that there's probably a, a target list of maybe 10,000 sites that talk about blog, that talk about podcasting. You can, you want to obviously start small and, and whatnot, but I think you can be growing by 30 to 50 links a month with just SEO efforts with just like two or three approaches around like building links from existing blog posts on podcasting. Got it. And then when you start the conversation, you start the compliment and you start with giving stuff. And because I don't want you to ask for a link only because the link is one part. What if they will promote your, what if they will promote your podcast? What, I mean, your software, what if they'll actually become a customer, right? So like leave it a little bit more fluid. Obviously, we want you to use a tool like Mailshake. This is my plug. Yeah, we want of course. You to use yeah, a tool yeah, yeah. like Mailshake with the follow up cadence and whatnot. But, and again, open invite here. If you want help writing what, what to write, you can just ping me. I'll, I'll give you some feedback. But um, I think we've got some templates that you can use that, that work well. Uh, but the point is to be sincere and to be the opening sentence be specific. So, like, I read your blog post on insert specific blog post. And then what you liked about it. And it doesn't have to be, that doesn't have to be specific or how it impacted you is even better. And that's scalable. Yeah. And then, and then boom. And, and again, I think the goal here would be to grow by 30 to 50 links a month. So why don't we do this? I will, I'm going to get into Mailshake. I'm going to come in. I'm going to start this off. And then on the podcast, I'm going to record, I'm going to document the approach. And then you can, I'll report directly to you and then we'll be aiming for 30 to 50. Sounds good. We are coming to the end. Is there, because we, like we've covered the product strategy, then we did content, then we did link building. Is there another section of advice you would like to give? Yeah, I think it's on influencers. So that's yeah. the last advice. And I didn't talk about PPC. I didn't talk about outbound. I didn't talk about affiliates because what, you don't have enough money to make PPC work yet. You don't, Affiliates, in my opinion, or referral programs are so minuscule in the early days that it's just never going to move the needle to your 10,000 MRR. I've never seen a SaaS company in the first years of life be successful there. Eventually they do. Hype drives affiliate is great or whatever, like, but not, they have you know, 50, 50,000, 50 million, some, like, some comma, number of commas customers, right? So influencers, I don't have the exact approach you can use here, but I can guarantee you 
and you're doing this already with your podcast. So you're doing a great job already. But like, how can you get the influencers, anybody who's talked about podcast software to like fall in love with your brand to like be your best friend or how can you be their best friend? And I didn't do enough research to tell you the exact strategy, but I can tell you mm -hmm. our approach at Mailshake and Red Inbox and our companies. So if you Google the term sales tools, sales tools, Mailshake is in the sales tool space, sales software, sales tools, whatever, right? There are like, or top sales tools. There are like a gazillion articles and gazillion probably is not the exact number, but it's probably in the, somewhere around five to 6,000 articles on some list of like intercom ranks, number one saying 45 best sales. Tools. Well, guess what? I want to be included on that, right? And I want to be best friends with all the authors of all these blog posts. And I want them to guest post on my site. I want to give them value. I want to just like, say hi and just say, Hey, like, love your stuff. Like, can I pick your brain? I mean, it's, first of all, I think you'll learn a lot, but it's less from picking their brain and, and it's more building and forging that relationship. Right. I think like neilpatel.com. I don't know. Do you know him? You're maybe one connection away from him. HubSpot. Oh, looks like replies there. Keep you know, infusion stuff. Like you just want to go get like getting to the source of HubSpot's hard. Saying hi to the guy who wrote the article, the girl who wrote the article, really easy. Uh, I, very tough name. I was going to tell you the person's name, but that they have the Twitter, right? Right, less is there, you know, that's the person's Twitter profile. And you just say hi, you ping them on LinkedIn. And don't do this whole like email approach. Go LinkedIn and say hi, build them like, build like a proper thing. And I also, I didn't mention this, but I want you to do remarketing as well. Anybody like, and do a blanket remarketing. Anybody who comes to your site, remarket them with Bcast software. And, and I say that because it's probably not going to drive any customers. But as you do all this marketing to influencers and to SEO, to guest posting, it will be a great echo chamber for those folks. They probably don't know who you are or won't know who you are until you're, you're and you're not big enough for them to care but they will think they know who you are because they keep seeing you around. Mm, yeah. That's it. That's my advice. I mean, this is a couple of things I really liked about this advice. I really like the thing we market and not, not look at the ROI because we're building like a long-term brand here. We want people just to remember the insight about just the volume of content is like completely the off of my strategy, but I'm also going to take that on. And then the thing I probably liked the most was the stuff you started with first, which was, Actually, the way that he's going to grow long term sustainably is if we can enable our customers to grow their podcast. And so that's the, these are the features that we should be looking at. Mate, thank you so much for giving me a free consulting session. As I said, I'm going to jump into Mailshake and then I'm going to do the backlink outreach. I'll update on this podcast. I'll also report to you and then we'll see how we get on there. Sounds good. Awesome. And I will, once you get into Mailshake, ping me and I'll write the content. I want to give you feedback on it. You can take their feedback and whatnot, but there's a lot, I think, in simplicity of the email that needs to be there. Amazing. I'll also then, after they've been reviewed by you, I'll put them on the blog post below this episode. So along with an affiliate link for Mailshake for the audience to jump in. Sujan, thank you so much for jumping on. And thank you so much, Sujan. You can tell a real growth ninja by their ability to give valuable insights without knowing that much about the business. So Sujan, we really appreciate it. And of course, thank you for listening. If you have any feedback about the show, please go to Apple, leave an honest waiting review, and I'll get you a shout out on the show. And with that, thank you so much for listening.